seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Yeshua dropped the stick, his execution stake, down to us to see if we would pick it up. Actually, I don't think it was Yeshua who did it. I think it's the Father who did it. Because doesn't the scripture say, where Yeshua says, no one comes to me except the Father draws him. So the Father doesn't delegate the calling. He, he does that himself through the Ruach HaKadosh, the spirit of truth that emanates from him. So the Father doesn't delegate that to Yeshua. No, it's the Father who draws us to Yeshua. And that We're in John chapter 6. We're picking it up uh, in verse 48. Verse 48. So skip all the way down. And then we're going to read through the end of the chapter. Follow along with me as I read. Jesus speaking here. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Wait, Jesus said to them, 30. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food. And I know a lot of people, um, especially uh, extreme right wing uh, Republicans, um, you know, they're kind of, as they would say, chomping at the bit because. And chomping at my ear. Hello, everyone. Chomping at the bit. Biden has caught, been caught doing something that he. Ladder. The top three, just incredibly strange and shocking things that are going Is that down Biden? as we are biding our time for the days to come. As we are biding our time. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood above. Abides in me, and as we are biding our time, as they would say, chomping at the bit. feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food. And my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. Abides in me. And I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Was before... was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. 
disappear and go dark. Verse 14. It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Uh, once again, Jude is giving a quotation from a non-biblical Book. It's a book that doesn't appear uh, in our Old Testament. Some believe it is taken from the non-biblical book of Enoch, which is pseudepigraphal. <laughs> There's a word for you. Uh, write that one down. It is literally a word that, was de that described a servant slave that decided their master was worthy of lifelong service. And you'll remember that this... The, this sort of a servant slave is talked about actually in the Old Testament. And when a servant wanted to stay with their master for life, the master would take the servant to a place uh, where he would pierce their ear. And that piercing would be the sign that this individual had taken uh, this role as a servant slave. And th this was done because the, the, the servant or the slave determined that their master was someone they could trust and they wanted to stay with. And they wanted to stay with them for life. For life. What do we need by, mean by called? It simply means someone who's been invited. To be called is to be invited. The word beloved simply means deeply loved. And that is you too. You are deeply loved by the Lord. And then finally, the word kept means to be watched over or guarded. And that is you as well. You are currently being watched over. And guarded, by, and guarded by the Lord. In fact, James is going to have more to say about that at the end of this letter. But again, I want to remind you that all those words describe every true believer. And then, you know, what saves you? Because there's a lot of false teaching going on about how we're saved. How Christians, what they have to do to be saved. There's a lot of teaching that is just flat out wrong. Some people say you got to keep the Sabbath. Some people say you got to be baptized in water. Some people say you got to speak in tongues. And there's all these things. Some people say you got to be a good person. There are, there are churches that teach that you're saved by a free gift of God, but you have to live a good life to keep yourself saved. And that's just another name for salvation by works. So when his brothers realize finally who he is in Egypt, and they're going to be terrified. And they're going to be terrified. Talking about the false teachers and the apostates who've made their way into the body of Christ, he says, these people also relying on their dreams or these dreams or... Four days ago. Six days ago. I said come back tomorrow. Reminds me of Joseph when his brother sold him because of his dream seven days ago. Because of his dream that's come in the past. This is about the Wizard of Oz and Kansas. Not in Kansas anymore. And the eagle has landed. So now that the eagles are playing the Kansas City Chiefs, Osprey, here's why Kansas City beat Cincinnati. Because Cincinnati was 
14 and 4 for the season. They were 14 and 4, and they were hunted for dinner. So now that the Eagle has landed in Super Bowl 57 for the second time in five years, the land of Oz is all about Kansas. And the wizard preying on those poor people. The Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. I can't thank you enough for giving so generously of your time tonight. I think it's... Hey, of course, you know that's not literal, right? There's a guy with one arm and I'm missing going, don't! No, I'm just kidding. But this is a, a picture he uses to show that we must take radical measures. In that culture, the right arm or hand was sort of hand was sort of as the best hand. And the right eye was thought of as the best eye. So here's what it means. And I'm missing going, don't! No, I'm just... something god damn it you're on television you're live to the whole world in case i don't see you good afternoon good evening and good night <laughs> yeah So, if I'm not mistaken, the United States is completely separate from the Bahamas and NASA and the Crossing Rocks and Great Abaco and Great Juana K and the Treasure Treasure K and Cooperstown and Foxtown and Pelican Point and High Rock. Grand Bahama and Freeport. That is the place. Freeport. To me, that means everything's free. The golf club, the lighthouse, Grand Bahama, High Rock. I bet you over there in this land, the head, even even the even the body, even the body, even the baby's body. It looks like it's all protected in some kind of a almost looks like a bubble, as if that was the Truman Show, and he was stuck on the Bahamas.
but I'm not over there. I'm stuck in the United States. At the mouth of this reptilian creature here. And I am over here, so you know, Miami Beach International Resort. I was looking to go for free for quite some time from Donald Trump. It's just not time yet. But I wonder why they were, I wonder why Truman got on a boat and <laughs> went that way. I wonder if Truman was down there in Miami at some point and just went on a boat and ran into the island. This is a, a picture he uses to show that we must take radical measures. Hey, a couple of things I wanted to mention. The Jesus Revolution film is around a month away. Billboards are starting to go up. Check out this billboard for the Jesus Revolution film. Isn't that cool? You know what, um, what I love about that? I just like seeing Jesus Revolution on a billboard. Even to be on marquees and theaters, and you're going to see commercials for it and other places uh, as it gets closer. So let's be praying for that. And here's. Oh, check that out. Greg Laurie interviews Kelsey Grammer. Everybody, Greg Laurie, Pirates Go, Kelsey Grammer, Jonathan Rooney, <laughs> Chuck Smith, and Lonnie Frisbee. So we're getting ready to shoot a baptism scene a little bit later. And uh, you guys have done such an amazing job in this film, both of you. Just wow. incredible. You have great chemistry together. Uh, there was a scene we were shooting recently in Alabama. And I felt like I went back in time and I was experiencing it as it happened. You know, in the tent and then in the chapel. So, I'm so glad you guys are part of this. So, Kelsey, you told me something uh, as to why you took this from. Right. Um, I've been going through some stuff in my career lately about, like, well, is it important? Does it mean something to me? And uh, I was sitting there sort of having a meditation one evening, pretty late into the morning. Uh, and as I sat there, I thought, just send me something. Next day. Wow. This so the, I think yeah. that was God's time. I do, too. I read it, and I said, thank you. That's it. <laughs> thank you for joining me. Thanks, man. Yeah. So glad to have you as part of it. Hey, Jesus, are you drinking anything at the moment? Or is he just drinking? I could be wrong. I was saying, I think Greg Laurie is, is this actor here, but one of them's taller than the other. And they're both there at the same time. But they're still body doubles and trickery, I'm sure. Once they started to that everyone's just the right person at the right time. And Lonnie also known as Jonathan, also known as Jesus, he's the chosen. Uh, how has it been for you playing this person, Lonnie Frisbee? Oh, it's been awesome. I mean, it's, um, he's unlike anybody else I've ever played before. And uh, I just feel grateful to try to bring him to life yes. in this story. And it's, it's an amazing story. And you get to see all the facets of his character. Yep. What what he represented for the Jesus people yeah. and, and the the power that uh, God used in him to, to heal people and to bring people to Christ has been, uh, been an However, you can still have a like when you're doing a sitting down scene, you're not going to know really the difference if you're just putting that mask on and then you're doing the part instead. Yeah. 
am not a square. I think we should invite Greg this weekend. What's this weekend? Say something, goddammit. You're on television. You're live to the whole world. Uh, where's the, where's the door at? <laughs> Over there, Dolphin. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah. From Florida to the Bahamas by boat. We are headed to the Bahamas. We got our health visas approved and we got our passports. Cool, what we're going to do. So first things first, we have to cross the ocean a hundred miles in order to get to the Bahamas. We're leaving. I mentioned what bothered John Mark so much that he believed he should leave the ministry. I do know this, though, is that during his 90-mile journey from 90-mile journey from to cross the ocean 100 miles in order to get to the Bahamas. We're leaving from our home here in the Florida Keys, but long story short, what we're going to do is we're going to bring you guys through our entire process of crossing to the Bahamas by boat just in case it's something that you guys have thought about doing. Um, we're going to try to give you as many tips and tricks as possible. Once we get there, that's when the fun starts because the fun starts. We are staying at the resort there in Bimini. It is one of the most amazing places to stay in all of the Bahamas. So we're so excited to show that during his 90 mile journey from Salamis to Paphos, something must have happened. That's the promise of judgment to those who blatantly and deliberately defy his word, rejecting his offer of forgiveness, and living that, that life of just total depravity uh, as we read in Genesis if. 19. So again, the point is just being made. God, these people also relying on their dreams or these, it says, but when the archangel Michael, and by the way, that's the only angel we know of who is an archangel. We don't know if he's the only one. I doubt it. But it says when he was contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, this is a Apparently, according to Jewish tradition, the enemy or the devil, if you will, was disputing uh, with the Archangel Michael concerning the body of Moses, we don't know why. These are things we don't have any insight uh, about. The point of all this is that Jude is simply saying that in this traditional story that the Archangel Michael did not presume to pronounce blasphemous judgments against the devil, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. Anyway, Jude goes, on verse 10. Presume. Don't just presume. Don't have a railing accusation. If you're going to have an accusation, don't let it be a railing one. 10. He says, but these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. So this is, this is the, the point here. Um, just as the, the archangel Michael didn't dare to accuse the devil, the false teachers do. They're constantly doing that. They're speaking abusively against things, he says, they don't understand. And so 
And so he's bringing this charge against these leaders. In the next several verses, and we're going to go through these, you know, fairly quickly, but Jude is going to use from very colorful and descriptive language to describe both the error and the danger uh, of these people toward uh, the body of Christ. And, and he's going to do it by uh, relating to several Old Testament stories. And this is frankly where it helps to have a good understanding of the Old Testament so that you know what he's saying. Otherwise, if you don't know the Old Testament, this is going to be a little challenging. Verse 11, he says, woe to them, and that's woe to these false teachers, these apostates, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain of to Balaam's error. That's what they all are doing. They're following in the way of Cain. Oh. Okay, going in the way of Cain. So for they they're going in walked your way. in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain of to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. Let me go through these very quickly. Three different So if they're going in your way, doesn't that mean that you guys are like the Rothschilds or something? Cain is the house of Rothschild. Right, right. That's who Cain is on the earth. Oh, on the earth. So didn't you decode that entire thing about the house of Cain? They're money changers. And a uh, perfect example. Uh, copy trading created by the little <clears throat> GU. Oh, yeah. Okay, eToro, okay, little GU. Oh. But then you know, this is, this is the, the point here. Um, just as the, the archangel Michael didn't dare to accuse the devil, the false teachers do. They're constantly doing that. They're speaking abusively against things, he says. I rebuke you, Robinson, Henry, T.E.S. Robinson, Henry, Robinson, Henry, I rebuke you. He's told him he's going to deny him three times, okay? In all the ages. <laughs> Not just that time, but three times throughout. Remember you. I gave you a thumbs down. I gave you a thumbs down, and uh, I'll rebuke you again. I rebuke you, Robin. Henry, geez. Because I know you're a liar, like your father, the devil. Yeah, I can see that. Not the liar part, but the devil part. A feast with you without fear. A hidden root are believing this beast from the pit, Antichrist. I can't believe that people are actually believing the horseshit that comes out of this Antichrist's mouth. Um, he goes on to talk about them as shepherds feeding themselves. The function of a shepherd is to take care of the sheep and make sure they are well fed. He says, these shepherds are only feeding themselves. He's no reason why you should be elevated above us in any way. And Moses, who was an extremely humble man, uh, got down on his face and he said, God chooses who he will. So we'll just leave this up to God and you'll remember. Wow. Doesn't, Moses doesn't sound like Stephen James being humbled. Not at all. Remember that God um, took care of Korah and his family. And uh, so Korah's rebellion is well known uh, for its in his inability to submit to authority. He was just a rebellious man. He didn't want, he was one of those kind of guys that you hear people talk about today that says, nobody's going to tell me anything. Code. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I am master of my own life, and you can't tell me what to do. And, and it, it's just rebellion. And that's what Korah was like. That's what Jude is saying that these apostates are, are, are about. He is saying that these apostates are, are, are about, about jealousy, bitterness, love of money, and rejection of of authority. Verse 14, so he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring back, bring word back to me. And then he set him off from the valley of Hebron. And when Joseph arrived at Shechem, which by the way, would have taken him about two days or so of travel, just going on by himself, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they're grazing their flocks? Well, they've moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. 
So Joseph went after his brothers, and he found them near Dothan. Now, cisterns, a cistern being uh, a holding place of water, water. All right. But they saw him, speaking of Joseph's brothers, in the distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Wow. Well, this was nine years ago. So, it's only a Bible story nine years ago. Here in America, you got the bald-headed eagle. Bald-headed the king of the birds, just as the lion is the king of the bush. And it's the unchallenged master of the air. King of the birds, just as the lion is the king of the bush. And it's the unchallenged master of the air. We are being prepared for our task in Yahweh's own eagle's nest. That's where we are, in Yahweh's own eagle's nest. Overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives. Rejoice, O heavens, and you them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, because he knows he has but a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle and that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. This is called the seer. One of the Old Testament's words used to refer to seer is ra'ah, literally meaning to see, to ra Ah. Uh. <laughs> Time to reverse the damage. to come up higher we want to renew our strength we need we want majesty now did you know that the united states symbol uh was going to be a turkey yes hi everyone this is john this is going to be part two of uh the comet c2022 e3 turkey, turkey. now a turkey is a theatrical term and one who is trying to show off and not doing a very good job at it. Now I think in the in the uh, the church, I think we have some turkeys because they're not hearing from God. They're kind of hearing from each other. They're each gobbling back and forth at each other. The thing about turkeys is they Hi, peck everyone. at the ground. Well, they peck in the ground, problems. and and they they're yeah, always got their head down. They're always picking up garbage. Well, you know, want you all to have gobbling. access. But guess the where they end up? On the kit, on the dining room table at Thanksgiving. You know, you don't want to be a turkey. Robin wants you all to have uh, access. A mark. It's unbelievable. What you know? He's he's. It's, uh, please, people, wake up.
to give you some of the scriptures about eagles. You know, eagles are taught, like I said, they're used 26 times in the Old Testament. And um, we, the, I'm going to have just a few minutes here. Exodus 19.4 from the voice translation. You were witnesses of all that I did to the Egyptians. You saw how I snatched you on the bonds of slavery and ca carried you um, snatched you from the bonds of slavery and carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So Listen to it. But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Let's see what's going on in General Hospital as early as six hours ago. All right, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You and I have been through too much together, and we know that we can trust and rely on each other. Am I right? Yeah, we can trust and lie on each other. <clears throat> You're right. Say that again. Let's see if AI catches that one. On each other, am I right? can trust and rely on each other, am I right? Uh, it said rely, but yeah, she definitely said lie on each other. We know that we can trust and rely on each other, am I right? <laughs> yes. yes. What's on your mind? Trina told me about a genealogy test that she took in school. What? A genealogy test? Nah, ah. Uh. Man, this just gets better and better. Harvard gene, the genealogy test, two gene, genities, heterogenities. Here's one heterogenities from Polk, Polk County General Hospital, which is now called the Bartow Regional Medical Center. About a genealogy test that she took in school. Around about the same time I took my... Super University. But something feels off about it. Huh? Yeah. She also said that you spoke to her about the genealogy test. And I wonder if that's because you think there's something suspicious about it, too. No way. There's nothing suspicious about it. Whatsoever. Are you nibbling on my ear? Is that like breadcrumbs? Or the bread? Does it taste like bread? I wonder, is, it, is that a cup? Is that the right hand? Is the right hand better than the left hand? General Hospital teaser. Next, General Hospital. Call Dr. Navarro. Are you willing to have that on your conscience? I want answers and I want them immediately. You've gone too far this time. I am not going to rest until that woman pays for what she did. Any regrets? What the hell? After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God, out of life. And, he, and if you need to underline or highlight this in your Bible, it wouldn't be a bad idea. He says, if anyone eats of this bread, he will... He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Or eyes to see. Live. 
Hold on a second. Hold on, Kim Jean, with a dagger in your hand. As if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. <laughs> you couldn't have stressed that any much anymore. January 29, 2023. January 30th, 2023. Just a comparison. Does that not look like someone's eating my flesh, my ear? Kind of looks that way, doesn't it? About as close as I can get. The Joe biding time. Joe Biden time. Chomping at the bit. 51 following, I guess we kind of read that here. Again, we'll say, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. He's clarifying, you know, that he is the bread. But now he goes further and he begins to talk about what you need to do with the bread of life. And, he, and if you need to underline or highlight this in your Bible, it wouldn't be a bad idea. He says, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. There you go. H, H. H H H H eight 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 Shh for a half hour Shh This is This is a certificate of live birth. Now, I entered this into my collection of folders December 25th for the first time I entered it. This is a certificate of, of a live birth. And we can also assume that this is Truman's birthday. In an interview, the creator of The Truman Show, Kristoff, mentions that Truman was selected because his birth lined up with the scheduled air date of the show. In Look what happened to Rosemary's baby. Wanted pregnancies. The casting of a show determined by an air date. Truman was the one who arrived on cue. Now, this is all assuming that this date, December 13th, 1996, is correct. In the film, they established that the whole crew behind the Truman Show has no qualms about butting into Truman. December 13th. Show has no qualms about butting into Truman's life and diverting it to suit their needs. Behind the Truman Show has no qualms about established that the whole crew behind the Truman Show has no qualms about butting into Truman's life and diverting was the one who arrived on cue. Now this is all assuming that this date, December 13th, 1996, 13th, 1996, this date, December 13th, it's a, so what you're saying, you can't make this stuff up that you were, um, I mean, oh, you meant, you meant uh, 14 years later when I would produce the video on December 13th or at 14, 15. Every last bit of it. No question about it. Six is correct. In the film, they established that the whole crew behind the Truman Show has no qualms about butting into Truman's life and diverting it to suit their needs. Whether it's... You know, like the gang stalking corporation. To marry the right girl. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Okay. Excuse me. Right. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry I fell on you like that. It's okay. Do a live product placement. It's a Dicer grater peeler all in one. You never so, need sharpening dishwasher set. I don't need it. No. Wow. That's amazing. Or convince Truman not to leave town. Having a fictional timeline would just serve to. Don't even think about it, Robin. 
further confuse Truman. Also, the time period is confusing in a different way. It may say 1996, but this doesn't feel like 1996. Kristoff isn't necessarily restricted to a specific timeline. Don't forget, the town of Sea Haven is just one big set and exists in sort of a vague late 50s, early 60s time capsule. In any case, take today to celebrate the man who unwittingly touched the hearts of people all over the world by just being himself. Just being himself. Happy birthday, Truman. I'm sure it will be quite a fantastic one. 46 full years later, leading into 714. Why, why do they believe that? Well, they're trying to be true to John chapter 6, where John said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. They're attempting to be true. And I, I, I give them credit, at least, for attempting to be true to that passage. But I would suggest that they have misunderstood the passage and they have ignored where Jesus brought clarity to what he was saying, which is found in verse 63. Look in your Bible, please, with me as we read verse 63 together. This is Jesus clarifying what he meant and why he was telling these things in metaphoric language. He says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. And the words that I've spoken to you are spirit and they are life. In other words, Jesus is saying that the true meaning behind the metaphoric language and the figurative language is that it pertains to a spiritual dynamic, not a physical one. It Time to reverse the damage. Physical. There is no need for transubstantiation because the words that Jesus was giving have a spiritual meaning, not a physical one. And that's elements are a picture, a figurative picture of what Jesus did for you on the cross by bearing your sins on his body, by shedding. It's funny because in this picture, there's a bunch of, there's a, it looks like there's a lot of weight on my shoulders, but you're not supposed to see the weight that's on my shoulders. You're supposed to just, no, no, Rob, let's look at, that's just a background of a, a, some kind of, I don't know, poster or something, or maybe there's a blanket up in the background. Yeah, yeah, why is my bro like, you're, you're, you're playing with the puppet. Oh, no, it's just nothing. Don't worry about that. How come my brother has two claws? Uh, it's just his fingernails. It's just the way it's pressed down. Right. Why is it that my mom's turning into Ozzy Osbourne? Or Ozzy's turning into my mother? Huh? Why is Joe Biden biting time? Biting my ear? Why is he sniffing me like a child? Why does he have one eye? How come this one's plucked out? How come he get my arms red on this? Uh, red and ruddy over here. And then over here it's a yellowish serpent. Look to it. How come uh, my mom's wearing a bug that looks like it looks the dress looks like a bug? Why is it that my sister Barb just really ain't having it anymore? How come this looks like a skeleton? How come he looks like his tongue sticking out? Why is his tongue sticking out? How come it's biting my ear? Is it a breadcrumb? Is it like bread? Are you listening? Do you have ears to hear? Do you have eyes to see? Does the government rest on this child's shoulders? Is this even me or is this my evil twin? Is this even anybody in my family or is it a picture from the exact other side of the twins that came out different that are wearing bodysuit baby mask face plants? I mean, I got so many questions that uh, it's just like an or orb and the they uh, take the pictures and, oh, yeah. And why is it that one arm is really, really, really red and the other one is really hairy? And why does it look like it's a bone? And how come in Petco 2 there's a bony person that's leaning over? <laughs> so how come when these tanks come rolling 
Well, first, the swamp is being drained in Florida. That is, this is the nuke. Right eye, the right eye is popped out. Over here, it looks like it's the left eye. And the next scene, you'll have the skeleton. After opening up the present, male to female mixture of the AI component draining the swamp. It, it could be the fluid inside of the body or something. But anyway, it's draining the swamp. It's burying the hatchet. This was the top of the Georgia Guidestones piece when it was chipped off, blown up. He has a curly noodle in his forehead. He also has a tooth missing because it's a tooth for a tooth in this system with the heel catcher. The tanks are coming. Red, red, green. I said the eagles. And now that Cincinnati Bengals just lost, And it's the Chiefs color. And it's also like a football. It's shaped like a football. And it has the threads through it. Like the, the threads of a football. This has that look to it. There's the Cincinnati Bengals. So it's the Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs, Cincinnati Bengals. Love, Love Park, Philly, peace, there is no peace. This is the look on everybody's face when the Cincinnati Bengals lost after PA is blowing the whistle. He's also the skeleton blowing the whistle. And then because you have a skeleton blowing a whistle, Once you find this angel falling down from heaven, like that with the fangs on, you see this whistle looking item? Right there, the, the way that it's designed. To me, it looks like a whistle. But he also kind of looks like a referee. As if he's getting ready to blow the whistle. From Philadelphia to Florida, where it's time to drain the swamp. Draining the swamp, to me, means it really started. For me, it started... started when I decided to upload my birth certificate and talk about it on Christmas, December 25th, 2022. You know, confusing or complex, you, you must partake. The reason Jesus is giving these graphic pictures of eating flesh and drinking blood is because he's simply conveying the idea, you must partake of what I am going to do for you. Don't just look at it. Don't just admire it from a distance. Take it in. You remember when Jesus went through this whole process once again at the Last Supper? Let me put it on the screen. It's from Matthew chapter 26. He says, Lord of God out there, shut up and just, just like I said in my video yesterday, read the Bible. That's why I love Poor Pilgrim. And that's why I like Ashley. And that's why I like some of your guys' videos because you just, you just read your Bible. I love that. Damn, Robin, okay. same thing with you, brother. You were reading the Bible for a whole week straight. I was loving it. I hate your interpretation. I should say hate. I can't stand your interpretation because you blasted me the crap out of the word. Of course but I, I enjoyed that. Eating. 
Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take and admire. No, doesn't say that. It says, take, eat, take it in. This is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, right? Don't just look at it. Don't just admire it. Drink it. Partake of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that for other people, but not me? I mean, look what I just got done doing. And at that moment, Jesus would come to you and say, are you going to turn away too? Are you going to walk away? Or just hand, handle your business and get back to work. I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they're grazing their flocks? Well, they've moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers, and he found them near Dothan. Now, Dothan.